Open the doors. Release the participants. Place on a Kraken. Earthquake was enough. We don't need a Kraken. Uh, <laughs> no. That was exciting. I missed it. I was out. I was outside of my driveway. Uh, so yeah. I was. I was outside. I was up early doing some work. And you did. I, I thought it was a truck. That's. Mm. I, didn't, I didn't. I was. Yeah. I was at work at the NW. I'm bummed because it was not on my 2020 disaster bingo card. <laughs> I hope there's nothing left on your 2020 card. Yeah. I hope you already called bingo. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. It was a do over. Yeah. Wait, did Ray call us? We didn't get a call from Ray. <laughs> yeah, I know. I actually, I thought well. Hey Andrew, happy anniversary. Oh man. Thank you. <laughs> well, the, reef, the reef is a very nice restaurant in Newport. It is. Very COVID uh, friendly, you know, they keep you very spaced out. Outdoor dining available. How much more spaced out can you get? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can't just, you can't open those doors and not expect me to walk through. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that was a walk. <laughs> 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 when life presents you with the opening line, you must follow through with a punchline. Got to. I have the marky mark. Is he having technical difficulties? As always. I don't want to sound pushy, but we have a quorum in the Patriots starting an hour and a half. Not that they're very exciting to watch this year, unfortunately. Maybe they'll finish two and 14 and they'll get a good draft pick. Trevor Lawrence, baby. There's Dr. Ryan. Okay. All right. He muted Dr. Ryan, but. Yeah, he's. <laughs> he gets that silly mute button. Hmm. Wait, are we muted? No. Marcus. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome but to our in. Uh, town council meeting. Uh, for those of you, well, we'll start with the, the usual. We'll stand for a moment of silence uh, and pledge allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic, and the nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Okay. Uh, again, welcome to our, our November 9th. Uh, town council meeting. Uh, for those of you at home, uh, just as a reminder, uh, star six will mute and unmute your phone. Star nine will indicate uh, the other 
question, uh, we'll be able to take a uh, hand to raise a question. Um, when called upon, please state your name and address for the clerk. Uh, and now we can begin with the roll call. Ms. Ujikusa? Here. Ms. Abbott? Mr. Hamilton? Here. Mr. Patson? Here. Mr. Kelly? Mr. Kelly? Here. Dr. Ryan? Here. Here. I'm sorry, I just want to make sure. Could you hear me? Yes. yes. Well, it was Andrew, we couldn't. Uh... Okay. Okay, uh, uh, President's Executive Summary. Um, actually, just a brief update uh, on the elections uh, from, from the Board of Canvassers. It appears that uh, November 30th um, would possibly be the date for certifying the results of the election. Uh, with that being said, our uh, swearing in ceremony council would be on December 7th. Um, that's, the, that's the tentative schedule uh, using the normal. November 30th date uh, as a certification date. Uh, until such time, uh, the current council will continue to do uh, the business for the town. So we will now move on uh, to our consent agenda. Move to uh, approve as presented. Second. Second. All those in favor? Ms. Uchifuza? Aye. Ms. Abbott? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Aye. Mr. Katzman? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Dr. Ryan? Aye. Dr. Aguiar? Aye. Motion passes 7 to 0. <laughs> Next, we will be sitting at the Board of License Commissioners. Uh, it is that time of year when we get to do the annual liquor license renewals. So bear with us, folks. Um, first item is the annual liquor license renewal, uh, class A. Uh, we will, we'll read them all and then vote on Is that okay if we go that route like we've done in the past? My class, yeah. We'll go, uh, first one, Allen's Wine and Spirit, Inc., 301 East Main Road. Next, we have Ferreira's Package Store, Inc. at 1965 East Main Road. Moriarty's Liquor Locker, Inc. 624 Park Ave. Tough one. Osnikova, Inc. Doing business as Portsmouth Liquors, uh, 1557 West Main Road. Move to approve. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor? Ms. Ujikusa? Aye. Ms. Abbott? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Aye. Mr. Katzman? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Dr. Ryan? Aye. Dr. Aguiar? Aye. Motion passes 7 to 0. Next, we have our class BH slash BT, uh, Roger Williams University, uh, 144 Anthony Road. Move to approve. Seconded. All those in favor? Mr. Jacusa? Aye. Ms. Abbott? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Aye. Aye. Kelly? Aye. Dr. Ryan? Aye. 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 Motion passes 7 to 0. Next, we have our class BB LLC, uh, DBA and a D Cafe, 954 East Main Road. Uh, Fieldstones LLC, 980 East Main Road, Smith Harbor House LLC, DBA, 15th Point Road, Food Works Inc., DBA, Food Works Restaurant, uh, 2461 East Main Road, Graziano's 501 Cafe LLC, 501 Park Ave, Green Valley Country Club Inc., 371 Union Street, Those Crazy Kids LLC, uh, DBA, Gulfstream Bar and Grove, 
think DBA Global's Kitchen and Cocktails, 657 Park Ave, uh, 88 Restaurant LLC, DBA Mindy's, uh, 3351 East Main Road, uh, TNBC Beach Club, LLC, DBA Newport Beach Club, 195 Newport Harbor Drive, uh, Oceanside Enterprise, LLC, uh, DBA, Portsmouth Public House, 600 Clock Tower Square, Paco's Little Italy, LLC, 880 East Main Road, Tremblay's Bar and Road, Inc., 514 Park Avenue, and Tainapochi Estate, DBA, uh, Valley Inn Restaurant, uh, 2221 West Main Road. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. And we asked the uh, police chief if he's had any uh, issues down there at either location. We're trying to find <laughs> Chief Peters. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Chief. Uh, on the we've, had no, we, we've had no issues uh, down there. No uh, reports of any uh, thing as far as the uh, outdoor uh, uh, sections have uh, been included. And even though it's not on there, Chief, can you same thing for locals? Correct. No, no issues. Move to approve uh, the Class BB license with the outdoor service uh, as it has been, remaining the same hours, the same for both locations. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Ms. Abbott? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Aye. Mr. Katzman? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Dr. Ryan? Aye. Mr. Aguilar? Aye. Motion passes 7 to 0. Uh, next, we have our class BV cancellor at uh, Newport National Golf Club, uh, Inc., uh, 324 Mitchell's Lane. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Who's that? Aye. Ms. Abbott? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Aye. Katzman? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Dr. Ryan? Aye. And Mr. Aguilar? Aye. Motion passes 7 to 0. Uh, next, we have our class DDL. It's uh, West Main Pizza. It's West Main Road. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Ms. Ujikusa? Aye. Ms. Abbott? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Aye. Katzman? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Dr. Ryan? Aye. 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 Motion passes seven to zero. Uh, class D. Um, I'm going to have to break these up because I am a member of the Portsmouth um, Portuguese American Citizens Club. So we'll vote on the other four and then I'll just recuse on the last one. So uh, the first one is Alvaro E. Vieira Memorial Post Home Inc., the VFW Post uh, 5390, uh, 822 Anthony Road, ACC Everything, doing business at the Quignet Country Club. Montauk Country Club, 500 Anthony Road, and Sakana Sportsman's Club, uh, 145 Sakana Drive. Move to approve. Seconded. All those in favor? Ms. Ujikusa? Aye. Ms. Abbott? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Aye. Mr. Katzman? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Dr. Ryan? 
Aye. Aye. God bless you, Miss uh, Abbott. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the the uh, next one is just the force of Portuguese American citizens vote. I'll be abstaining or refusing our vote. Motion Move to, to approve. Second. Second. Ms. Kujikuza? Aye. Ms. Abbott? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Aye. Katzman? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Dr. Ryan? Aye. Okay. Uh, six and zero. Next, we have our class J. It's a new port following Glen Farm. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Ms. Ujikusa? Aye. Ms. Abbott? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Aye. Mr. Kaplan? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Dr. Ryan? Aye. Mr. Aguilar? Aye. Motion passes 7-0. Okay. On to our annual Sunday sales license renewal. We have uh, Allen's Wine and Spirit Link, uh, 3001 East Main Road, Ferreras Package Store Inc., 1965 East Main Road, uh, Moriarty's Liquor Locker Inc., 624 Park Ave., Bosnia uh, Covid Inc., uh, DBA, Fort Worth Liquors, 1557 West Main Road. Move to approve. Second. There. Mr. Jukusa? Aye. Ms. Abbott? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Aye. Katzman? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Dr. Ryan? Aye. Right here. Aye. Motion passes 7 to 0. Okay, we're on to our annual particular licenses with extended hours of renewal between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. Cumberland Farms Inc., DBA Cumberland Farms, uh, 1812 East Main Road, Quidnick Donuts Inc., DBA Dunkin' Donuts, 1550 West Main Road, Portsmouth Donuts Inc., DBA Dunkin' Donuts, 3001 East Main Road, Drake Petroleum Inc., DBA Melville Extra Mark, 1568 West Main Road. Just so you know, um, Extra Mart is the only one that's open 24 hours. The others open at 5 a.m., which is why they need to have the extended hours. Motion to approve. Seconded. All those in favor? Ms. Kujikusa? Aye. Ms. Abbott? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Aye. Mr. Batsman? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Dr. Ryan? Aye. Passes seven to zero. Okay, on to our uh, particular license uh, annual annual new it's Ortega Bacon, DBA Ortega Bacon, 1965 East Main Road. Move to approve. approve. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. David? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Katzman? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Dr. Ryan? Aye. Mr. Aguilar? Aye. Motion passes 7 to 0. And we have our daily liquor license, class F1, uh, Island Park Preservation Society, uh, 21 Peach Street. We're tree lighting at 706 Park Ave, uh, November 28, 2020, from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Motion to continue the hearing until Monday, November 23rd. Seconded. All those in favor? Mr. Jacusa? Aye. Ms. Abbott? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Aye. Katzman? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Dr. Ryan? Aye. Mr. Aguiar? Aye. Motion passes 7 to 0. Okay. 
Do we need a motion to adjourn? No, because we, no. we we've continued. continued it. Yeah. Right. It was confusing the way the uh, uh, yeah. agenda was written. At least confusing to me. <laughs> Jen's just too smart for me. What can I say? All right. Was in front of me. I read it. Uh, next, we have minutes uh, from our October 26th uh, meeting, as well as executive um, and executive. Uh, Move to approve both. Second. All those in favor? Mr. Jacuzzi? Aye. Ms. Abbott? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Aye. Captain? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Dr. Ryan? Aye. Mr. Aye. Motion passes seven to zero. Next, we have uh, tax vouchers. It's a uh, request approval for tax voucher uh, 2020 1109 01 to 2020 1109 03. Motion to approve. Seconded. All those in favor? Ms. Ujikusa? Aye. Ms. Abbott? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Aye. Katzen? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Dr. Ryan? Aye. Aye. Motion passes seven to zero. Next, we have our town administrator's report. Mr. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. President, uh, town council, ladies and gentlemen. With respect to our COVID 19 update, uh, this week, the state of Rhode Island uh, began additional restrictions to stem the rise of COVID cases. Uh, Rhode Islanders should only be going out for essential activities such as work, doctor's appointments, uh, and a grocery store. A stay-at-home advisory is in effect from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Sunday through Thursday, 10.30 p.m. to 5 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. Social gatherings uh, are now limited to 10 people or less in groups that must remain consistent and be limited to interactions with the same uh, people. All restaurants, bars, gyms, recreational facilities, and personal services must be closed at 10 p.m. on Sunday, uh, Sunday through Thursday, and 10.30 p.m. on Friday through Saturday. Retail establishments must actively ask customers not wearing masks to do so immediately or vacate the premises. A relief program for restaurants and bars that must close earlier than usual due to COVID-19 restrictions uh, has been established. There is information available on our website uh, and at the Division of Taxation's website. Regarding sports, the maximum of two spectators for any athlete younger than 18 years old will be allowed. All spectators and athletes are required to wear a mask at all times, including during practices and games. Youth and amateur sports have been categorized as low, moderate, and high risk with limitations for each. And those are outlined on the update page. Additionally, the governor is revising the mask order to require that masks be worn at all times outside the home. Businesses will need to remind customers to wear masks and or offer them uh, when people are in the establishment. Uh, Rhode Islanders should have received an emergency phone alert at noon yesterday informing them of the new restrictions. Uh, and as a reminder, free asymptomatic uh, COVID-19 testing is available uh, through uh, the Rhode Island portal, is portal.org, portal.ri.gov. With respect to our collective bargaining negotiations with police and DPW, we have finally ironed out the last remaining issues surrounding the, uh, the uh, proposed agreements and finance is finalizing the financial impact statements and human resources is putting together the completed draft agreements. We will bring those uh, documents before the council for your approval at the next council meeting. And then the Rhode Island Office of Healthy Aging and uh, the governor uh, announced last week this, the distribution of $800,000 to support local programs and services for older adults. Uh, the special funding will help community and senior centers mitigate the operational impacts of COVID. Municipalities will receive funding based on the number of older adults living in their community. Uh, the minimum grant award is $2,000, and funds will be used to help uh, communities enhance the services available to older adults and caregivers, invest in supplies, and implement public health guidance as we receive more information on the form of council. Uh, that is my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Rainer. Okay, uh, moving on, we have 
have uh, resignations and appointments. Uh, we have appointments uh, to the Melville Park Committee. It's a reappointment, uh, Mr. Ed Rizzi. Move to approve. Move Mr. Rizzi to the Melville Park Committee. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Hamilton? Aye. Captain? Muted. Muted, Len. Aye. Kelly? Aye. 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 Motion passes 7 to 0. And then we have a Appointment to the Solid Waste and Recycling Committee. Uh, we have a applicant for Jen Hager. Motion to Both appoint. To Seconded. All those in favor? Ms. Susan? Aye. Ms. Abbott? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Aye. Captain? Aye. Ms. Kelly? Aye. Dr. Ryan? Aye. 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 Motion passes seven zero. Okay, on to old business number one. Uh, this is a discussion regarding the previous national grid presentation of the LNG facility at Old Mill Lane. In consideration for submitting formal comments on behalf of the council, um, supporting one or more of the options provided. Um, let me just start this off by saying um, that I felt. Uh, as a council, we should be uh, putting something down um, to address the workshop that National Grid held. They asked for our feedback. They asked for feedback from residents. They asked for feedback from the community. We felt that this was our opportunity as a council to uh, provide, create the framework of a letter um, that we could then submit to National Grid before the December 1st deadline. Um, what I would like to do tonight is discuss the framework of the letter. Uh, we can then craft the letter um, and put it on our agenda for the next meeting. And then we'll come up. That way we can discuss the framework tonight um, and then we move it forward to our next meeting for a vote by the council. Um, I would like to focus on you know, the four uh, solutions or options that were presented to us by National Grid. Um, I do not want to have, this is not intended to be a public hearing for, for the, uh, national grid, um, presentation. Uh, I think during the presentation, we received uh, a tremendous amount of, uh, questions and answers. Um, that information is currently posted on the national grid website. Um, so we are aware of the concerns of our citizens, um, as counselors, we've probably all received uh, uh, emails or comments from, from citizens expressing their their concerns or their comments about the facility. We are aware of them, um, but tonight I would like to just focus on our, from the counselors. I'd like to hear some feedback from the counselors regarding what the framework of the letter could be, what your concerns might be, uh, what options uh, you would consider. Um, I, I personally, um, I'll start it off just because this was my item, but then I'll, I'll come back, um, you know, but essentially I think as we all heard during the presentation, um, you know, I, I'm opposed to Old Mill Lane being a long-term solution uh, for National Grid to address their, their gas demands on the Quintic Island. Uh, I think that was uh, the sentiment of many of the folks that, uh, participated, you know, in that workshop. Um, that facility originally, the LNG facility there was intended to be a peak shaving operation. It was intended to uh, take the, the curse off of the demand during the, the potentially coldest days during the winter. Um, initially that was projected to be, you know, a couple of times during the winter. Uh, we heard from them, they did not even activate the facility last year. Um, so, you know, the, the initial intent of that facility was, a, was uh, really to, to address a short-term need during the cold months. I think what at least I saw during the presentation was um, that facility becoming a potential longer-term solution 
technology could then supplement their future gas demand. Uh, they did show that as you project out towards 2035, the, the demand increases over those years. And I think the reliance on the LNG at Old Mill Lane would increase over the years. So I would be opposed to Old Mill Lane being part of a long-term LNG facility. Um, I did like, they did present four options. Um, just to recap those four options. Uh, one of them was a non-infrastructure solution, um, which they, they made reference to, you know, heat pumps and, you know, maybe solar options to um, get folks off of gas. I think they put out a number of, uh, you know, you'd have to get about 9,000 um, homes or customers to convert over. And, you know, and they would have to do that by 2030, 2035. Um, that seems like, uh, you know, that's their non-infrastructure solution. Um, I, I, I have my concerns about that. Um, the second option was a, an LNG solution, which they talked about uh, potentially extending a line over to a site on the Navy base. They mentioned that they did have a site over there uh, that they had used previously. Their lease was expiring. That parcel was no longer available, but I believe through discussions with the Navy that they might have an alternate location, which would make um, that an option for them to relocate uh, an LNG facility over at the Navy property. That again would help supplement the existing gas supply onto the island. Third option is a, is a new transmission line. Um, and then the fourth option would be to continue the LNG at Old Mill Lane, um, you know, with with uh, what they said, demand measures and, and preserve the contingency of the service. Um, you know, in my mind, my opinion, uh, I think a real viable uh, option that would provide long-term reliability is a new transmission main onto the island, a second source onto the island, which would provide a loop for gas service so that if one feed goes down, they have a redundant feed and supply gas service to their customers. That's the, that's the long-term reliability. Um, and if, if you look at any of the other options, you're talking about supplementing LNG um, into the existing system. We know that there are limitations with the, the current service on the old building. So I, I would question the long-term reliability of, of option two, but I would prefer option two if it meant that they would, um, you know, relocate that LNG facility over to the Navy base where it would then take it out of, you know, the residential area. Um, you know, my preference would, would be, you know, if I had to rank them, I would take option three as my number one choice and option two as my second choice. But, you know, those are my comments. I would open it up now to other counselors to see what your thoughts are on this topic. Um, I want to go first or I, Ms. Sue. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I have to say that the I was privileged to just sit in on a City of Newport Energy and Environment Commission meeting where they discussed this issue at length with um, Mr. Uh, Hank Webster, who is uh, in our audience. And I believe that there is so much information that was not presented to us by National Grid that it would behoove the council to hear um, additional information prior to making a decision about these options. So um, if you wouldn't mind, uh, I would like to just have Mr. Um, Webster make a few comments and propose that we table this discussion so that we can include more information that was not previously presented to us prior to crafting the letter of which you speak. So uh, may I ask okay. Mr. Webster to make a few comments? I, I would, well, I would ask him to be brief because, and, and again, not, I'm not trying to diminish whatever Mr. Webster is going to say. It's just, um, I mean, if that's a good, provided a presentation and they were asking for feedback. Um, 
on their proposal so or their options. Um, I, I don't mind hearing from Mr. Webster, but I, I'm afraid by doing this, there's going to be a, additional folks that want to chime in as well. <laughs> um, I, I understood. And um, frankly, it's such an important issue. Um, and in the, the manner in which the last um, meeting was conducted with National Grid, uh, it was difficult to see um, what questions and answers were being asked even at their open house. So I just feel that it's uh, important for us to have complete information. And um, yes, I, I believe Mr. Webster will keep his remarks very brief. Okay. Is Mr. Webster um, a fan? He's a... Uh... Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll go with Mr. Webster because we're... Yeah, I was just wondering who Mr. Webster is, but I'm sure he can introduce himself. Hi, can everyone hear me? <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, my, my name is Hank Webster and I'm the Rhode Island Director of Acadia Center. And uh, we are a nonprofit uh, clean energy uh, data and policy analysis group throughout the Northeast. And so I just wanted to, to submit that there is a lot of information that was not outwardly presented. Um, Oh, hold, hold on, Mr. Webster. We lost you. Mr. Webster? He's muted. Webster, hold on. We're gonna... Okay. Okay. Can, can you hear me? I, I saw I got promoted. <laughs> We're going to ask you to start over. Now, now we can see you. You're on video. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry for, for all of that. Um, but my name is Hank Webster. I am the Rhode Island Director of Acadia Center. We are a Northeast energy policy and research organization, uh, nonprofit. And I just wanted to submit uh, for your discussion tonight that there is a lot of information that is uh, buried deep within the report. That is uh, things that energy analysts and policy experts hunt down and identify um, and work on as part of different technical working groups with National Grid. Uh, that is not making it into the presentations that I've seen going across the island. I've been tuning into to the various proposals. So um, most importantly, I, I would recommend you refer to figure 16, um, which is on page uh, 97, I believe, um, possibly 98 of, the, of their report. And it identifies, uh, it's nine, page 97. Um, it identifies that there are many benefits that uh, are, are inherent in the non-infrastructure solution. Um, whereas with the other solutions, they, they don't exist. And that's actually the way that the Public Utilities Commission looks at these proposals. They look at, what the, at the holistic view. And so when you look at that chart, you see that the non-infrastructure solution is actually much more affordable than the pipeline solution. Um, I also want to note for um, members of the council that might not be aware, uh, Massachusetts is currently uh, undertaking a process where they're going to uh, study and investigate a way to wind down their gas distribution system. So the idea that Massachusetts ratepayers are going to split the cost of a new transmission pipeline uh, is a fleeting proposition um, not only locally, but also just nationally, we're seeing headwinds against these types of projects that uh, make them financially unviable and, and end up getting canceled. Like the uh, Atlantic Coast Pipeline recently was canceled because of these reasons. So I would encourage the council to um, really look into those clean energy options rather than an additional pipeline. Um, any time spent pursuing an additional pipeline would probably be time lost in uh, getting to a solution that does shut down Old Mill Lane. And I will wrap up because I, I do respect the opportunity to speak and, and want to be brief, but we've done some modeling internally that get, just to give you some alternative cost figures on what it would take to actually uh, fix the constraint issue and get to um, a situation where you could shut down Old Mill Lane given the current problem and you could do it for as little as $10 million and do it within a couple of years uh, using just weatherization of homes on Aquidneck Island, as an example. You could also lace in things like heat pump water heaters or electric heat pumps or gas demand response activities. In Massachusetts, they can save about 5% just using that, that strategy. 
and then you wouldn't need to build a big pipeline. You would be able to um, satisfy the energy needs of the island and you'd have a safer community. And you save money for ratepayers for your constituents, so. Thank you. Um, so Mr. President, I would like to make a motion that we table this discussion and hear the entire presentation, which I just heard um, Mr. Webster make to the City of Newport's Energy and Environment Commission. I'm sorry, it's, it's a bit last minute. That, that meeting just took place between six and seven, um, but I was so impressed with it. And I feel that it's important for this information to be brought forward. So my motion would be to table. Um, this item until the next meeting and allow Mr. Webster to make a full presentation. Um, and I would with... second that motion. For discussion. Sure, I will second for discussion. I will also add that um, my preliminary assessment, I agree with you, Mr. Aguiar, continuing portable LNG at Old Millane is off the table as far as I'm concerned. I don't think that's in anybody's best interest um, within the port, town of Portsmouth. Um, I disagree on the other options. I think most of the energy and investment should be in option number one uh, in the non-infrastructure solution. I think the electrification of our um, of our energy use gives us the most flexibility to diversify where our energy comes from. I, I'll be quite frank, I, I haven't had the time or energy to dive as deep into this report as I feel would be necessary for me to make an educated decision. So I welcome the opportunity to meet, um, hear from somebody else that has had the time and, um, and energy and resources to do the research and present us with the other side so we can make a more well-informed decision when you know, crafting our opinion on this matter. So I, I support this um, you know, additional resource and would very much like to hear what they have to say. I would just like to say um, before we move on to continuing this, this discussion, um, comments are due on December 1st. So if we continue this to November 23rd, we have really no time to finalize something and get it in by December 1st, because we're gonna get a presentation that night. I, did, I don't think we have enough time. I, I mean, that would be my concern is making sure that you know, we, we get comments in by December 1st, um, or at least our, our concern in by December 1st. Uh, I, I don't think we're here um, to, to, to come up with, I, I don't think we're gonna come up with a solution, but I think you know if we suggest or if we decide which option we're gonna support, that's a, you know, we can vote on that as a council. Um, but I think it's important that we at least move forward with crafting a letter or the framework of a letter um, for discussion at our next meeting. I, I, I think if we table this, we're, we're not, we're, we're not going to help ourselves by getting a letter in place by December 1st. That, that's my concern. I, I think you were prepared to have that outline of a letter prepared uh, tonight. Um, and I feel like it could just as easily be done um, in two weeks. So. Okay, Mr. Captain. Thank you, Mr. President. First of all, thank you for bringing this forward. I think it is very important for us to, to weigh in, provide comments, and um, I echo your sentiment and those the others so far on the council that um, Old Mill Lane is not uh, a solution we want to, we want to end that um, as soon as possible. How we do that is, is what we're talking about. Um, I support the motion to table until we can hear from uh, uh, the individual. I'm sorry, Ms. Was it Webster, Mr. Webster. The National Grid Report is very detailed, um, but I think it's important to recognize that the report was prepared by National Grid. And I'm not implying any sort of wrongdoing, but a company is often in the position of presenting information in a way that favors an outcome that they prefer. And so I think it's important for this council to hear a non-national grid uh, alternative perspective. How we come out on the decision and what position we take after that is certainly 
up to us. It might not change our, anyone's opinion at all, uh, but it's certainly important to hear it. Um, so if there is, I think we can get it all done on the 23rd. If you're concerned about that, we could schedule a meeting for next week. I, I'll throw that on the table on, on uh, the 16th. Alternatively, could somebody reach out to National Grid and ask for an extra week for comments? Mm. Our state representative is, has had conversations with NGRID and they indicated that they would be okay with um, comments that came in after as long as they were um, made aware of the, that they were coming. However, I do believe that they can be prepared after the meeting in two weeks, just as they could have been prepared after tonight's meeting. Well, I would rather see us call an extra meeting if necessary, although I agree it's probably not necessary, than to craft an opinion without having all the information that we should have, or at least alternate views of the information. I move the question, Mr. President. I have a motion and a second. Hey, hey, oh, hold on, hold on. I, I didn't know if you're going to ask for any other comments. I was, <laughs> I was going to ask. For, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I was waiting for you, Mr. President, to, to I, ask for any other comments. I, was, um, I agree with your comments earlier that the, the, the non infrastructure solution is a good long term, 30, 40 years down the road. Um, the, the technology is starting to get there. It's not 100% there. Maybe it's 60, 70%. Plus, we don't have the infrastructure for the electricity to be able to handle it either. So while doing non-infrastructure non solutions is good for the long term, it's not going to be effective in the short-term solution of moving Old Mill Lane off of the site. So... The first thing we need to do is to try and work with the Navy and National Grid to get this moved over to the Navy property. The second solution, I agree with you, is a transmission pipeline. Regardless of non-infrastructure solutions, we still need to have a reliable source. Gas is not going to go away. We're not going to start cooking in restaurants and people are not all going to change their houses to gas, to an electric heat. And it, Honestly, the cost of electric heat is a lot more expensive generally uh, as it stands right now than gas. So we need a long-term solution that gets us more away from oil, which is much more polluting and dirty than gas is, and combines all of one, two, and three. Number four, like everybody else has already mentioned, is completely off the table. Um, in terms of putting extra tankers down there. The, the pumping station or the station that's there now will continue and will never go away. But we need to look at putting in a solution that brings in a pipeline at the northern end of the island to create that loop so people don't run out of gas. Um, the, the scary scenario is that what happened in Newport two years ago cascades out to Portsmouth and all the Portsmouth gas residents also lose. And then we're stuck without any heat across the entire island. So looping in the pipeline is the only thing that makes the most sense. And as far as tabling it, we can craft an opinion with a letter that's done for the 23rd, hear the presentation and make adjustments to it rather than having to create the entire wheel on the 23rd. And I don't, I agree with Mr. Hamilton that a framework of a letter can be drafted between now and then, and it can certainly be altered to reflect the content of whatever the council decides on the 23rd. I'll just reiterate, perhaps a little more bluntly, um, having watched National Grid present information for several years in a row relating to their plan to build a power generation facility in Boroughville, I am less than just willing to unless oh, stop to stop cost. stop there that's that wasn't it, 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 national it was grid national wasn't building a power plant information it was national good presenting information and um i'm just like as i said it is not unusual for a company to present information in a way that favors a an outcome 
uh, that they prefer. There's nothing fraudulent or illegal or wrong about it. It's, but that said, it's appropriate, I think, for this council to hear information from uh, a non-national grid source, uh, such as the Acadia Center. Uh, I, I, would, I would agree with that. I think we do need as much information as possible. Uh, fossil fuels, including gas, are you know, certainly the infrastructure we have now. Unfortunately, it's sort of like an investment. The more you build, the more financial incentive you have to use. So the more pipelines we make, the harder it's going to be to switch away from that to use something else. And I'd point out that gas and oil are not produced in, in Rhode Island. Uh, solar and wind are produced in Rhode Island. And there's a lot of initiatives to try to increase the amount we're producing. So I think we should at least hear the you know, Acadia Center out. What ways can we move towards a greater reliance on the grid, on it, well, national grid, on, on electrical power, uh, which can be generated locally over the long term? And I agree with Mr. Hamilton. It's not an immediate short term solution. And there may be other things we want to do in the meantime, but I would be in favor of at least hearing that these people have obviously put a lot of thought into this, they have a lot of data. And I generally believe in trying to make decisions based on the most available data that can be gotten. Okay. All right. Um, I think everybody, Mr. Kelly, do you have anything that you'd like to add? No, thank you. Okay. All right. So um, I'm not sure how to proceed. We have a motion to table it, which means we stop. Or <laughs> we haven't voted on it yet. We still have a discussion. I think the biggest thing for us is to create a letter yep. that starts with, for lack of a better term, hell no number four, <laughs> and works on incorporating all the other three solutions to, to provide our residents with the heat supply that they need. Yeah, I, I mean, I that's, that, that that's as mind. simple as that. I, well, I, I think we can't our town administration needs a vote of the council to go ahead and prepare that. Uh, uh, correct. Uh, so long as they don't send it out until after the council has voted on it on the 23rd. Well, that was the original right, suggestion exactly. by the president was to have this discussion, figure out where we're at, and then come back on the 23rd after the letter has been drafted to review. I don't see why we can't do both with Mr. Webster and the letter now so that we're not rushing around having extra meetings and trying to squeeze it all in around Thanksgiving. Um, Mr. Yakuza, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think that there's going to be substantive information that will be presented that was not presented to us that we have an obligation to hear so that we make the best recommendation to Nat Grid. And if we need to hear this two weeks from now, we will still be able to craft a letter that reflects our opinion in two weeks that will be prepared in a timely manner. And I, again, I'll move the question that we table this item hear more information, and then at the next meeting, decide which options we support. Who's crafting the letter if we table it? I'm, I'm not sure if we don't know substantively which option we are going to go with, what exactly would be in the letter? Well, in my mind, the letter would say, um, we're opposed to Old Mill Lane being a long-term solution to their gas needs, which is how I started things off um, tonight. I, I mean, that was just my opinion um, that I, I don't, I don't foresee option four as being a long-term solution. Um, so, with that being said, if we had a preference as a town, they have National Grid provided us four options. I, I think they're moving ahead under the framework of modifications to one of these four options is, is probably what National Grid is going to do. So depending on how the feedback comes in from the communities and everybody else that's at it, it's a stakeholder is what's going to help guide this. If, if, if we're sitting here tonight talking about which potential option we're going to you know, recommend in, in order of one, two, or three, or 
you know, one, three, two. I mean, it's just a recommendation. It's our comment. We get it into national grid. It, it, if we want to have Mr. Webster come back and, and give us a presentation, he's going to be talking. Of, I mean, it, his focus has to be on options one, two, three, and four, because otherwise we're going to be off base when we try to talk to national grid. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's, you know, national grid gave, gave a presentation. I'd be curious if, if, um, if Mr. Webster has provided those same comments already to national grid. And so if he's already done that, then great. Then, then, you know, we can maybe chime in from, from that same perspective. But I, I just, I don't, I don't know, I don't see why delaying this um, is, I don't, I don't see the benefit. I think we can still move ahead crafting the letter and adjust it on the 23rd once we get some input from Mr. Mr. Webster. I, I would be okay with that. I just, I think if we craft the letter, then we're going to see it in our backup ahead of the meeting, and then we can have something to make comments on. I don't see us crafting a letter on the 23rd. I, well, I don't. From what you've described, the letter that needs to be crafted is quite simplistic. It would say we want the option that keeps it on uh, Old Mill Lane off the table, and we would like to, and then the fill in the blank part comes after we hear all the information that we can to make a good selection. So. I'm not sure what the complicated nature of this structure letter is. Um, it's just going to say what we pick and that we do not want it to stay on, on Old Mill Lane. Uh, we want it off as soon as possible. So um, I'm not sure I understand why we are making the drafting of the letter such a complicated issue. We will make a substantive choice at the next meeting after we hear information um, that goes beyond what National Grid has provided us. Mr. President, if I may. Sure. If we need a draft of a simplistic letter that outlines our options in order of preference to put on the agenda for next meeting, I would be happy to draft a letter. We can put it on the agenda and we can review it and adjust things based on the input we're getting. How can you do that if we table it? If you table it, we table it until the next meeting. I, I, that's what I'm getting at. I we mean, have it, but <laughs> if that's all we need, then fine, we can draft a letter until next time. But I, I, we're not gonna vote on our options right now. I didn't say we were voting on options right now. I said we were crafting a letter and getting feedback on our discussion for the next meeting. If, mm -hmm. if, if we want to move forward with additional feedback, it sounds like Mr. Uh, Webster's comments are going to be focused on option one, right? Non-infrastructure solution. Was that correct? Right. So, so we know that there's going to be his position on on uh, option one. I still feel strongly that, um, from a reliability standpoint, um, a second line onto the island it doesn't have to come from Massachusetts. It could come from another source. It could come over the Mount Hope Bridge. It could come over the Newport Bridge. So. I, I think a second feed onto the island redundancy is really something that has to be considered for long-term reliability. It, at least if they're considering a transmission pipeline, those options are on the table, or at least could be brought to the table. Um, if, if, so long as we have an opportunity to hear from uh, the individual, Mr. Webster, who uh, purports to have information, I, I don't know, Ms. Ujifuzo said she saw the presentation, as long as we have an opportunity to review that and have a discussion about it, then, you know, I have no qualms with drafting whatever anybody wants to draft on the understanding that come the 23rd, the substantive content of it might be dramatically or not altered by this council. Yeah, and could I make one other point, Mr. Uh, President, that was being made at the Newport meeting I attended? Um, many people wanted to stress one important point, which is that we cannot conflate uh, the issue of the Newport gas crisis solution with what Nat Grid is presenting right now, because they are talking about expanding gas services. And that is a different issue than responding in a way that protects people from the gas crisis that we saw a couple winters ago. So 
um, that is also an important point to understand, which frankly, I was not as cognizant of until I heard these facts being discussed. Um, even you yourself just now uh, and Mr. Hamilton are talking about safety as if what we're talking about is to try to avoid the gas crisis happening again. When in fact, there are many, many facts that Mr. Webster brought out and other people that shows that what we're talking about in the NAC grid proposal is not protecting us from a crisis, but expanding gas. And that's a totally different issue. Um, so I do believe that we can hear the information that's going to be presented as all the other town, or as Newport and Middletown are going to be hearing so that we can make an educated decision about what we would like to recommend to protect our citizens, uh, both physically and financially, because the cheapest option is not uh, presented accurately by NAC Grid in their 17 page PowerPoint. Um, if you look at uh, the graph that's on page 97 of the 125 page report NAC Grid presented, it shows that the option that is, the ch is cheaper to the consumers is the no infrastructure option, which I was surprised to hear frankly. And um, that information comes from Matt Grid's own uh, document, and it was never presented to us that way. So um, I think it's time that we have a fuller understanding of what the proposals are um, made by an outside party with expertise. Thank you. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, Mr. President, just one more comment on that. It's National Grid did say that the non-infrastructure solution was the least expensive of all three. Um, but they didn't think that they would have enough buy-in to get to that point because, listen, National Grid also does all the electricity. So they really don't care which one you buy. They're still going to make money. If you want to go with the non-infrastructure solution across the board, they're still going to make money because people are going to be buying electricity. So it... it leave national grid out of it. Let's talk about safety and the long-term viability of a gas source that is going to be available for the next 30 or 40 years, because the electricity is not going to catch up to that. I One at a time, please. Ms. Ujifuza, you had your hand up first. No, I'll let Ms. Abbott go. Okay. Um, this is a big problem. It's not a black and white one or the other, 100% this or 100% that. I think um, the non-infrastructure solution is frankly, in my personal opinion, a no brainer. We have to do that to and significantly invest in that. That is a separate issue from national grid building reliability in their own system. I am opposed to a transmission pet pipeline because I think that's just doubling down on fossil fuel. So, we should request that we invest in non-infrastructure solutions because that has the best benefits for our community. And National Grid can look into other alternatives outside of Old Mill Lane to improve their reliability on a Navy property or whatever. But doubling, tripling, whatever the pipeline would do to natural gas into Quinnick Island when we're trying to get away from fossil fuels is a very backwards way to approach this. Um, so, uh, you know, I would say let's invest in number one heavily, look at number two from a safety and reliability point of view, and it's not one or the other, and it's not do or die or one or the other, and it's, it's a combination of solutions together that gets us the best outcome. I will just say that I believe that all of us have the same goals of safety, um, economic value, and also reliability, um, but we need to understand what the options are and which ones get us to those goals in the best way. And it just seems to me that waiting two weeks to hear the kind of presentation that's being presented to the other towns um, is important. And um, in fact, frankly, um, disproves a lot of what um, Mr. Hamilton has been saying tonight, but we'll leave it there. Thank you so much.
And it's the least we can do is listen to the other side or some. No, nobody has suggested that we don't listen to the other side. We're just suggesting that you get a letter together so that we can review it on the 23rd. And adding the pipeline may add more capacity, but what it really does is allow for the gas to flow in a circular motion so that there are no dead ends so that people aren't starving of gas. It's got less to do with the capacity and adding more pipeline as it does to do with creating a loop so that people are at the other end of the loop and continue to receive gas. It's just simple physics and gas. I think we're going in circles at this point now. So. I, I, I understand, Mr. <laughs> Mr. President. I mean, I, I only deal with gas all day long in terms of pipelines in, I just was at a weld shop in New Hampshire this afternoon, this morning. So it, it's just the way the nature of gas and the physics of gas is, period. That's all. So our, we have a motion to table it. Um, and then we will, I guess, attempt to craft a letter with input um, at the meeting on the 23rd. All those in favor? Ms. Fujikusa? Aye. Ms. Abbott? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Nay. Mr. Katzman? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Dr. Ryan? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed. Motion passes five to two. We will move on. The president, do you want to respond to any of the questions that are listed on here? Well, can somebody screenshot them so we can answer them at the next meeting? I have them all here. Okay. If we're gonna have a I, have, but you think, I, I don't know if we can print them. Are they printable or? I don't know. Do we have that uh, capability? <laughs> I think after the meeting, in the meeting report, you might be able to print all the questions. Hang on. All right, hang on. I think I can copy and paste them in. Let me see. Yeah, I got them. Okay. I, I got them. I will send them to the clerk to be put in the backup for the next meeting. Good. Hey. Sorry, I, I missed I missed a couple, but I'll get them all. Don't dismiss them. I just missed the first one. Okay. Good. Got it. Okay. Got them all. I'm going to send them to the clerk right now. Next item, old business number two. We will request it's uh, it's an update on the status of the comprehensive community plan. Uh, Mr. Crosby. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. A couple of uh, days or a week or so ago, Mr. Rayner asked me to put together an update of where we are in the comprehensive plan. He asked me to. Uh, answer um, a few questions. Where do we stand? What exactly is left to do? And when will this be brought to the council? Where we stand right now is uh, Assistant Planner Ashola and myself are busy working our way through a punch list of comments that we have received over the last year or two, actually, of, of um, uh, uh, addressing um, what they see as deficiencies in each of the elements. We have been sending the elements individually up to uh, statewide planning to get their preliminary comments. And that, I, as I will explain in a moment, that has a great benefit for us. But um, we are currently working through um, the punch list. The, they primar the, the, the comments primarily have to do with um, the maps, the readability of the maps, you know, the colors and the hatching and so forth are not uh, very readable. Um, they have asked us to, um, uh, to, 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 to put some uh, items on the, that we talk about in the narrative onto maps, certain identifying certain water bodies, saltwater marsh areas, 
historic and cultural features, recreational features and so forth, which we haven't done yet. We're working our way through that problem. The other, uh, we're, we're working our way through uh, creating those maps and getting the text in the, each of the elements aligned with the, um, uh, with, the, with the maps, you know, the referencing of the maps and so forth. And the second thing that they've asked us to do in a couple of places is to um, uh, see if we can't, um, we, we relied on fairly old data, 2016, 2013, and they would like us to update some of the tables with uh, newer data. So we're working our way through that. Um, second, what exactly is left to do? Uh, what is left to do is for us to finish this punch, punch list. What we've been doing as we finish, um, as we finish polishing each of the elements, we send them to Western, Western and Sampson, our contractor, who it will then, once they get all of the elements, um, uh, that we have finished with our uh, polishing with our punch list, they will combine them all into a one giant um, PDF, which is uh, all of the elements and all of the maps together and send that off to um, uh, statewide planning for their review. They have, um, they are by law required to set up a 30 day comment period for uh, that final complete draft of the plan. They have 40, they have 15 days to do that. So perhaps 45 days from when Weston and Sampson sends the entire package up to statewide planning, um, they will have a comment period that will then close. During this comment period, what they do is shop it around to our uh, adjacent communities and all of the agencies in uh, at the state, D DEM, CRMC, uh, DOT for comments. They will compile all of those comments and get them back to us. They have 30 days to get them back to us. We have then 60 days to address any deficiencies that we have and then get back to them, which they then come back to us and the town. And the third question is when will this be brought to the town council? Um, uh, and my answer to that is it depends a little bit upon um, the, the um, uh, the statewide planning, if we had not been sending these elements up individually, they would have up to statutorily, they would have up to 120 days to uh, get it back to us. But since they've seen all of these and the comments that they've sent back to us are relatively minor, um, that um, that we could, that, that will be um, um, sped up a, a great deal. So my answer to you is when will this be brought to the council? I would say somewhere in probably the February or so timeframe. And then you can hold your public hearing and, um, um, and then we, depending upon what comments and changes the council wants to make on the draft of the plan, um, it will go back up to statewide planning if there's nothing really substantive it can come back to us really quickly. If there is, then we'll have to, there'll be a bit of back and forth to make sure that um, our, our plan is, or any individual elements of our plan are approvable. So um, that's where we are. Thank you, Mr. Crosby. So um, it's looking like the March, February, March timeframe, we'll see the draft that's been vetted initially by statewide planning um, we'll have our public hearings and then uh, any revisions we'd incorporate and it goes back for the final okay at statewide planning. So you're gonna have to that's work. correct. So that's correct. I, and that's correct. And I would like to point out that the planning board has already um, had their public hearing. And at the time I told them that uh, we would be engaging in this process of um, uh, we looked through all these comments and they were not substantive enough for us to go back to the planning board and they agreed to have us just go right on ahead and make this happen. So 
they're, the planning board is good to go with this timeline as well. Okay. Um, so move, just to move forward here as we progress, and thank you for this um, you know, uh, summary of, of where we're at. Um, I think what would be helpful is if we could get an update you know, every month or every six weeks or so, just to, just to touch base on you know, the punch list and, and, and getting things buttoned up and submitted back to you know, statewide planning, just so that we can be updated and, keep, and, and help keep it on track. That's all. Absolutely. Will do. We have Benny. Mr. Morris. Um, can we, Mr. Morris, can you hear us? Yes, I can now. Just make a first, um, a very quick comment. And that is, I'd like a commitment from the council that when this public hearing process begins, the comprehensive plan that it be done in public and not through one of these Zoom meetings where we miss large parts of what's said and have a difficulty getting in to make our comments. So I think that uh, this is an important, an important document. It's very convoluted. It's very extensive. It's been worked on for a long time and we can certainly wait a few more months until we get the opportunity to meet in public. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fitzmaurice. Uh, I mean, it's a very good point about, you know, public meeting and what the venue may be. Um, we really don't know where we're going to be in March, February timeframe. Hopefully things will be looking better than they do right now. Um, but I mean, at this point, we can we can agree that we'll, we'll figure out a format for a public hearing, um, but we'll have to do it with guidance and, and what's allowed. Um, I know that these Zoom meetings are, are not ideal, but um, if, if we're in a situation where it's the only way to move forward, I think we have to make every effort to try to move it forward. I think we'll have some discretion at that point, but I mean, the focus right now is, is let's get the plan revised, back up to statewide planning and back in front of us. And, and, and then we'll, we'll, we'll know better where we are back in, in February, and March timeframe. And then we can, we can address the public hearing at that point and hopefully we'll figure out a way um, and, and things will be better. Maybe Mr. Smith Morris, I'd like nothing more than to see you standing in front of me. <laughs> well, I'm sure that's true. Uh, however, <laughs> I'll point out that we've been at this for four years, if I can remember this correctly. And a few more months won't hurt us. I, I understand and I appreciate your your patience. Um, and we will see where we go, uh, what we can do with the public hearing. And, and if we can put it off a little bit, we'll put it off. I mean, but we'll have to we'll have to make that decision in February or March. Right now we still got a lot of work to do to get to get to February or March. So thank you, Mr. Crosby. Um, anything else from counselors? Comments? President, I just want to add that a lot of constituents have told me they really appreciate seeing um, our meetings on Zoom. They were not able to participate before. And so I would really highly urge that we continue both um, Zoom and live if we can, um, because Zoom has been actually a benefit for increasing public participation. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sujifuz. And I, I, I have had a lot of positive uh, feedback on the Zoom meetings. I, I don't know how it works once we're not under the situation we're in, but uh, if, if there's a way forward, we can we can absolutely uh, entertain it at that time. They they do have their they do have their benefits for those that uh, can't get out much. Um, but uh, thank you. Um, so now um, go on to new business <clears throat> discussion and. Um, I asked this to put on here. It's a letter regarding the Department of Navy, Navy Facilities Engineering Command to perform a perimeter boundary survey of Naval Station Newport and its surrounding properties. Um, for those of you that may remember um, when the Navy started to revisit their property line a few years back, we started getting a lot of um, calls, questions from residents that uh, you know the Navy was taking over their property. And, and in fact, the Navy's fence line, if I'm I, I may understatement, but I, I think the Navy said their fence line was probably 20 feet actually off their property. So the fence was probably 20 feet into the Navy property. And what was happening was this uh, 
uh, residents were actually encroaching upon the Navy's land. Um, so the Navy is, is you know, set out to, to re-document their perimeter parcels, their, their perimeter boundary. Um, they have sent out a letter notifying residents, but I just wanted to put it out there tonight. Um, not everybody may get the letter, it may get misplaced. Just letting people know that um, if you do a butt Navy land, um, they are conducting a perimeter survey. Uh, they are only trying to locate their property line. Um, they did ask homeowners for permission to get onto their property. I guess some of the property might be inaccessible from the Navy side, uh, it's uh, wetland areas and, and, and such. So this really is just a, a letter informing residents that they're gonna, that the Navy is out there doing some survey work. We don't have to do anything. And I just wanted to get it out there and notify the residents. So I don't really think we need any action. Um, any comments, questions? None? Okay. Uh, on to correspondence. Move to receive. Motion to receive. File. Second. All those in favor? Ms. Ujikuza? Aye. Sabat? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Aye. Mr. Katzman? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Dr. Ryan? Aye. 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 Motion passes 7-0. to zero. On to future meetings. Uh, what you see before us here is our November 23rd town council meeting. Um, it may change if the election results are, are uh, certified. We, we would have a special meeting on December 7th and then uh, regularly scheduled meetings after that. And December 28th, and then January 11th. So that's all we have for this evening. Thank you all. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Ms. Ujikuza? Aye. Ms. Abbott? Aye. Mr. Hamilton? Aye. Katzman? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Dr. Ryan? Aye. Dr. Aye. Motion passes seven to zero. Thank you all. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you.